This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today's quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to kind of create this edgy, fast, impact, diagonal looking intro for your animations, your YouTube videos and whatnot. This is pretty easy, pretty fast to create. And we'll be using a few techniques such as expressions, cameras, text animators, and stuff like that to kind of create this intro. Um, a great little learning experience, and you might learn some few tricks and stuff like that um, in this tutorial here. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition. I'm gonna make it 1080p, 24 frames per second and around eight seconds long. And I'm gonna call it intro, hit okay. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new solid. And I'm gonna call this BG, make it comp size and make it kind of like this off white color. I almost never make things completely white or completely black. I kind of like to make it kind of like an off, off white, off black, kind of like stuff like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our bar here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new shape layer. And I'm gonna call this bar. I'm gonna toggle the switches here and go and add a new shape, which is our rectangle shape. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add a fill to fill the, the, the uh, bar here. And I'm gonna make it black in this case. You can make it red if you'd like Supreme or YouTube or whatever, I'm gonna make it black just for simplicity's sake here. And basically the problem is I wanna animate the size, right? The size is linked together. So we can unlink these and we can control the individual X and Y proponents of this, compo of this property right here. Um, but it doesn't allow me to animate, right? We can only animate the whole size together as a whole. We can't animate um, the X and Y individually and we can't break and separate the dimensions of this property. Um, so that's kind of stupid, but we can fix that using some expressions here. So I'm gonna go into my bar here. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply some expression controls under the effects. So I'm gonna go in up and look for slider control. And I'll drag that onto my bar and I'll go ahead and duplicate it. Control or command D to duplicate it. And so we have two slider controls. I'm gonna call this size X, size Y. And I'm moving a little bit faster because I know that some of this stuff is kind of basic for a lot of people. But if you, you know, if you want to pause the video and follow along or, you know, just rewatch some parts, um, this is basically what I'm doing here. So, so what we can do is we can go ahead and go to this property, the size property, hold down alt or option on the keyboard and press the size stopwatch right here to bring up the expression controls. And we're going to set up a really quick expression here, var x equals we're gonna pick whip our size X slider up here. Um, semicolon to close the statement, var Y equals, and pick up again the Y slider that we created, close the, um, the statement with the semicolon. And for the final value of this property, open bracket X comma Y, close the statement with the semicolon. And what this is saying is, hey, variable X is gonna be this slider, Variable Y is gonna be this letter that we created. And so for this property, the size property, ignore this, the values are gonna be X and Y, which are these sliders right here. Cool. So now we can control the X and Y individually with these extra sliders that we created linked with expressions and life is good. So I'm gonna animate the X and Y independently. I'm gonna start with the Y of around five. So we see some little lines and I'm gonna start at zero for the X. Um, hit a stop watch for the slider and we'll move maybe like one and a half seconds or you know a quarter second or so and we'll just extend the x a little bit and how wide you make this just depends on your text so let's let's, let's just make it you know 1200 and then you know maybe a little bit before that so i'm gonna hit you on the keyboard kind of show the keyframes right now so here's my x slider x here and for slider Y, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a keyframe for five, a little bit before it ends, move a little bit after it ends, and maybe just increase the size. And if we hit U, U on the keyboard, you're gonna see our keyframes. And as you can see, we have the X animating, and then the Y kicks in and it expands the box a little bit. And you know we can make it a little bit shorter here. And so right now it looks kind of like crap because we have no easing whatsoever. And so you can go ahead and select the keyframes, hit F9 on the keyboard to easy ease it and go to the graph editor here and adjust the graphs. Um, but I have a cool little tool on creativedojo.net called Dojo Ease, which kind of allows you to edit the curve and easing of properties uh, very quickly. 
um, which you can purchase for a very low cost. But basically, I'm gonna select my keyframes, um, easy ease it, and I'm gonna kind of shift it to the left here. And you don't need this tool to do this. You can actually just do this in the graph editor and drag these little handles right here and do that yourself. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, this tool just kind of saves you time here. So, you know, get a curve looking like that, hit F9 and just go ahead and play around with the curve um, and click on the graph editor here. And you'll get something like this. And so I kind of want this bar to animate in first, maybe the take a little bit too long. And then the bar opens up well, actually, let's go ahead and make this thing a little bit diagonal. So for that, I'm using an, an effect called the, the transform effect under distort. You know, apply that to your bar and you can change the skew to like negative 10 or negative A or positive 10, positive 8, depending on what kind of skew you want on the bar. I like negative 10 or negative 8, so you can kind of keep it like that if you want. And so cool. Let's go ahead and create a new text layer. I'm going to call this the dojo. I'm using a very thick font, um, the black font weight. I'm using the, uh, the Montserrat font, which is a very popular web font as well. And it's looking pretty good, but in order to make it slanted again, we're gonna go ahead and apply the transform effect to the text layer and make the skew match. So negative eight in our case. And I'll just go ahead and hit P on the keyboard and adjust the position down a little bit so we have our text nicely aligned. And as you can see, the size is a little bit too big. So I'm gonna go back to the bar here and go to the slider size Y and just kind of adjust the end size a little bit, or I'm sorry, the size X slider right here. And there are some ways to kind of make this thing responsive to your text, right? Um, we can use some expressions to auto, auto resize the bar to match our text. So whatever our text is, um, I'm not gonna go into it in this tutorial, but I have several tutorials that I'll link in the, in the description down below, uh, where I kind of explain how to make these responsive shape layers using some expressions. Um, in case y'all are wondering, look up source rec at time and other things like that. Um, but as you can see here, now we have our bar, we have our text just sitting on top of it. Let's go ahead and start animating this text. And we can do that by using some text animators here. So toggle down the text layer, go to animate, and we're gonna add a position. And basically it creates an animator and we can define a starting position and we can offset that based on time. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the position down, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm moving the text position down. Let's just do 200 in this case. And so it starts off like that and then we can offset it to the original position using the offset parameter right here. And so we can animate that starting at zero We'll, you know, right when the bar starts opening up here, maybe like right here or something, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a keyframe for offset and move to the end somewhere right here and change it to 100%. We'll go ahead and apply the same easing here. Um, F9, easy ease, and just, you know, play around with the graph editor here. And so now we have something like this. But as you can see, our text is just chilling here. And I wanna kind of cut this text out and only show the text if it's within kind of this bar region here. And we can do that by creating a mat. So once you're happy with your bar, right, you can um, go ahead and just duplicate it, right? And I'm gonna go and change the fill color to something like a green so you guys can see what's going on. So this is my second bar. We're gonna use it as a mat, um, but I kind of wanna make it a little bit smaller here. So so you can keep the X the way it is, but for the Y, I kind of want to make it a little bit shorter and you'll see why. So basically wherever this green is, this is going to be where my text is going to show and anywhere outside the green area is, uh, you're not going to find any text because uh, we're going to mat it out. And you can use track mats for this, you know, using track mats this way. I like to use a set mat effect just because I feel like it's a little bit easier to follow along. I'm gonna apply a set mat effect to the dojo text. Let's just call this mat, text mat. Go back to the set mat effect and say like, hey, yo, look at the text mat layer and look at all the effects and mass once it's applied, use the alpha channel of it as a mat. And so your text will only show in the green area, right? So it's taking the alpha information of my mat layer and applying it to my text layer. 
So now that that works, you know, we don't even need to show the green. So we're gonna go ahead and hide that text in that layer. We don't need to see it. We just need the information from it. And so now our text only shows within that green area, which you can't really see right now. So now it's starting to come together here. We have this kind of like animation here and you can go around into the text animator, go to advanced and you can play around with like, you know, you want it to be based on characters or words or lines and, you know, change the shape and smoothness and easing. You can also randomize the order. So things come at different times, which looks kind of bad in my opinion, but you know, there's that option. Um, and you can do a lot more text animators here. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more stuff to this thing. So under animator one, I'm gonna add some tracking just to kind of add a little bit of um, spacing animation right here. So you can kind of see what it does here. I'm gonna change it to maybe like 15. You know, it just kind of animates the easing in a little bit. Um, this is that very subtle subtle look here. And then we can also add an opacity, right? And change the initial opacity to zero. And so it's kind of gonna slowly kind of fade in as you can see here. It's very subtle, but you can see this, oh, it kind of fades in. You have something like that. And there's a few other properties you can add. You can play around with, you know, the rotation skew and like blurs and, add some um, different selectors in there to select different things. You can even actually animate this word from up top down. You can animate this here from down up and, you know, add your own variation, add different mats and just, you know, kind of play around with it here. Um, so right over here, we have the general form of our little intro here. So before I add the finishing touches and kind of make it look a little bit better, I wanna go ahead and thank our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to make it easy to create amazing websites, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from. It's fully customizable to make it the way you want it to look like without any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So what we have here is the basic animation here but it's looking a little static here. So I kind of want to add a little bit more motion and we can do that by adding a camera here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new camera. Call this camera. I'm going to make it a 35 millimeter camera. You know, you can turn on depth of field if you want, hit okay. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new null object as well. And we're going to call this dolly. So what you're going to find about the After Effects camera is that it's very finicky and there's not a lot of individual controls. And so a lot of people create like kind of camera rigs using uh, using null objects and stuff like that in parenting in order to achieve the individual emotions that people want. And we're gonna do that in After Effects as well. So we're gonna take the camera here, toggle your switches and modes, hit F4 or whatever, until you find the parent and link and parent the camera to our null object, which is called our dolly in this case. So now that our camera and dolly are linked, you know, we can animate things and they kind of move together. So. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and toggle the switches and make sure that my bar, text mat, dojo, text layer here are all 3D layers. So they respond to the camera. And basically throughout the whole animation here, let's say throughout the whole five second animation, I want my, my dolly here to slowly kind of zoom in or dolly in. Make sure that this null object is also a 3D layer. I forgot to turn on the 3D switch for the null object, but make sure that the null object is also a 3D layer so we get access to the Z position here. And basically, I kind of want to start off a little far away. Like, I don't know, like negative 500 or so. And just hit a keyframe, move forward to the end of our intro, just kind of zoom in a little bit. So by doing this, our null object or our dolly is just gonna be slowly animating in words, you know, when, th when nothing's happening, we're just kind of just dollying in and zooming in. And it's gonna give intro a little bit more life than just, you know, having it just sit there and do nothing here. So maybe 450. And so now we have this dolly zoom, it's just zooming in, doing this thing. For the camera, I wanna hit P on the keyboard for position and go ahead and right when the box opens, Hit a key frame for position. And right when the text starts coming in, I wanna just kind of zoom in real quick. Like that. So as you can see by doing it this way, 
you have the flexibility of adding your, you know, your initial camera movement, which is the zoom. And in the background, you also have a dolly, just kind of dollying in forward and stuff like that. And again, we can also hit F9 or um, easy ease this stuff right here. Shit, go to the graph editor. And, you know, you can kind of play around with that. Let me scoot it up. And as you can see, we get this initial panning, zooming in when the text comes in, and it just kind of dollies out with our dollied null object. And we can actually go ahead and move the zoom, the initial zoom a little bit earlier. So it kind of zooms in a little bit earlier when the box opens up. And as you can see, we have this cool little diagonal intro and you can add some subheading or some subtext down here, like subscribe or, you know, what have you, your website information, your channel name, whatever. Um, but this is just kind of a quick way to create a very basic intro using some text animators, cameras, expressions, and some basic transform effects here. If you like this video and want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon to stay notified of all of our uploads. We upload a lot of cool video tutorials, product reviews, plugins, freebies, news, and all that great stuff. So check it out over at the Creative Dojo YouTube channel. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.